Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical lean algebra applications. Today we are going to have a lecture number 12. Before going to the lecture number 12, let us quickly recall what we did in the last lecture. In fact, you know the finding out the eigenvalues for a particular matrix will be a tricky not just that you know 3 by 3 matrix or 4 by 4 matrix and simply we try to find out the determinant and then make the characteristic equation and get the eigenvalues. But the real difficulty remains how do you find out the, the eigenfunctions for a particular eigenvalue. So when you have a matrix the entries of the matrix are very well defined in the sense that they are all normalized. The computation would become tricky, easy, but then when you have a the matrix entries will be fractions, then it the solution may blow up. So therefore, you have to use normalized fashion and then start with the computation of finding out the eigenvalues. Look at this. Today we are going to have a a difficult and a very speciality transformation which for finding out the numerically how do you compute the eigenvalues of a matrix. That is what is called similarity transformation and eigenvalue computation. A basic idea to numerically compute the eigenvalues of a matrix is to transform the matrix to a simpler form that is transform the matrix to a very simpler form so that which can be handled by using the regular methods like elementary row op operations using a similarity transformation by which the eigenvalues can be computed more easily. Now all of you knowing very well or let us quickly recall what is actually the transformation? How this transformation will bring you the matrix computation and thereby the matrix eigenvalues quite user friendly. So before going to that, let us start with basic definitions. What is similarity transformation and what is actually similarity matrix by the following theorem. Theorem, two similar matrices have the same eigenvalues right by using the elementary operations you do get what we call the eigenvalues so these eigenvalues competition is very very important in many realistic applications now what actually when do you say that two matrices are similar to be similar matrices because one matrix could be obtained by a series of elementary row operations by a series of elementary row operations then i would be getting what we call the matrices are similar so let us formally define let a and b be two similar matrices let a and b are two similar matrices then there exists a non singular matrix x where determinant is free from zero such that x inverse x happens to be matrix B. Then I can call these two matrices A and B are two similar matrices. Right? So it is not just that similar matrices means the entry of one by one will be same as entry of one by one for another matrix. Those are called equal matrices. If every entry is same in two matrices, then they are called equal matrices. Right? But this is not actually that it is a similar matrices. So I call this A and B are two similar matrices. If I could able to find out a non-singular matrix X, right? I, if I could able to find out a non-singular matrix X such that X inverse AX happens to be a matrix B. Then I can call these matrices A and B are two similar matrices. Now as already I spoke, since 
by using the matrix A and applying the element row operations over the matrix A, I would be getting a matrix, another matrix. So obviously these two matrices will have the same eigenvalues. Also in a similar fashion, two matrices have the same eigenvalues because one matrix is obtained by the elementary operations of other matrix, thereby you would be getting a non-singular matrix X such that X inverse AX is equal to B. Now let us prove this theorem. It is a very simple by using what we call the determinants. Let us see that then the determinant of B minus lambda I is equal to determinant of X inverse AX minus lambda I. So again it does, which turns out to be determinant of x inverse a minus lambda i of x and again that can be written as determinant of x inverse and determinant of x determinant of a minus lambda i that will be equivalent to determinant of a minus lambda i. So thus a and b have the same characteristic polynomial. So therefore, once you are able to get the same characteristic polynomial, that is characteristic polynomial, characteristic polynomial will give you what you call the roots, roots, right? So since the characteristic polynomial is same, obviously the roots are going to be same, right? So that means we could able to prove that two similar matrices right we could able to prove that two similar matrices will have the same eigenvalues now it is very interesting or curious to ask the converse that is the converse is actually not true what is that converse two matrices have same set of eigenvalues they are not necessarily similar matrices. So, for example, if you have a say lambda square minus 2 lambda plus 1 is equal to 0 is the characteristic equation. So, you do get lambda minus 1 whole square is equal to 0 which implies lambda is equal to 1, lambda is equal to 1 are two repeated roots, two repeated roots. Now, when you have a two repeated roots, right? So, not necessarily that the eigenvalues are, despite of eigenvalues are same, you may not get the matrices A and B have similar matrices, right? That is what actually the converse is not necessarily true, right? Converse is, we can put in the following fashion, converse is not necessarily true. Right? Converse is not necessarily true. That means two matrices A and B are similar matrices, but they may not have a same eigenvalues. They two, if, if two matrices have the similar matrices, they are necessarily to be have a same eigenvalues, but converse that is having two matrices having the same eigenvalues does not mean that they do become a similar matrices. Right? This is the one very interesting ideas. Now you can see with simple example look at this the matrix A is the matrix A 1101. So what is the eigenvalues of this matrix? 1 minus lambda 1 0 1 minus lambda. So what is the determinant of this? So 1 minus lambda whole square minus 1 is equal to 0 minus 0 is equal to 0 which implies lambda is equal to 1 lambda is equal to 1. These are the two eigenvalues. Secondly, for the matrix B, matrix B is equal to that is 1, 0, 0, 1. Obviously, this is the identity matrix. So, therefore, 1 minus lambda 0, 0, 1 minus lambda that is equal to 0, which implies lambda is equal to 1, comma 1. So, that means matrix A, comma matrix B, both will have the same eigenvalues, right? But they are not similar matrices. That is, if there exists a non-singular matrix X such that X inverse AX is equal to B, right? 
So that means you do have x inverse times of 1 1 0 1 that will be equivalent to x inverse x inverse a x is equal to you should get a matrix 1 0 0 1 right. So what is the form of x so that you would able to get one I mean you would able to when you multiply this inverse along with the matrix a and x you do get a matrix 1 0 0 1. So this is not possible right. So a and b have the same eigenvalues but they are not similar matrices because we cannot be able to find out a unique x such that x inverse ax is equal to b right x inverse ax is equal to b. So therefore the, the example 1 1 0 1 okay 1 0 0 1. So two similar matrices have the same eigenvalues but does not mean that Two, I, two matrices will have same eigenvalues 1 1 0 1 and 1 0 0 1 not necessarily that they are all similar matrices. It is possible that at certain case it may be a similar matrix but in general it is not true this is one of the counter example. Yes now let us further go ahead in this direction simpler form associated with eigenvalue computation that can be obtained via similarity transformation. So when you wanted to do see that so far what we did was we defined what we call similar matrices and we did also the similarity transformation. We also did what we call the two similar matrices they may have same eigenvalues and we proved that converse is not necessarily true and we have given a counter example. Now, if you go in this direction, simpler form associated with eigenvalue competition that can be obtained via similarity transformation includes diagonal and block diagonal forms, diagonal and block diagonal forms that is Jordan canonical form, Jordan canonical form that is the one way of doing it, diagonal forms. diagonal forms block diagonal forms then you do have Heisenberg form Heisenberg forms companion form companion form, triangular form, triangular form. So simpler form associated with eigen eigenvalue competition that can be obtained via similarity transformation includes diagonal and black diagonal forms. There will be blocks that is principal diagonal super diagonal, sub diagonal. Then it will form a blocks, right, block diagonal matrices which we call it as Jordan blocks and the transformation associated with what we call Jordan canonical form. Then we have what we call Heisenberg form, Heisenberg form. Then we also do have companion form, Heisenberg form, companion form triangular form that is diagonal tridiagonal tridiagonal matrices pentadiagonal matrices like that we have a blocks so now let us go ahead with the diagonalization of matrix so ultimately what we wanted to do is we wanted to find out what is the best way of computing the numerical eigenvalues so we wanted to diagonalize so in this direction, let us go with the diagonalization of a matrix, diagonalization of a matrix. A matrix A, a matrix A is called diagonalizable if x inverse Ax that is x inverse Ax, if x inverse Ax is 
a diagonal matrix D. So this is a diagonal matrix D. Diagonal matrix D. This decomposition is referred to as eigenvalue decomposition. So which we call it as eigenvalue decomposition. eigenvalue decomposition. A matrix A is called diagonalizable if a matrix A is called diagonalizable if x inverse Ax is a diagonal matrix D. This diagonal, this decomposition is referred to as eigenvalue decomposition. This matrix, this decomposition is called eigenvalue decomposition. Now let us formally define define the how do you find out how do you compute the eigenvalue decomposition for that we need to have what you call a algebraic multiplicity so let us define algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue of a lambda of m a see the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue lambda of a is the number of times it appears as a root of the characteristic equation for example lambda minus 1 whole square is the characteristic equation is the is the characteristic equation so that means lambda is equal to 1 comma 1 right lambda is equal to 1 comma 1 the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue of A is the number of times it appears as a root of the characteristic equation. An eigenvalue lambda is a simple eigenvalue, an eigenvalue lambda, an eigenvalue lambda is a simple eigenvalue if its algebraic multiplicity is 1, that is algebraic multiplicity is 1. The geometric multiplicity of lambda is the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda. So the geometric multiplicity is the lambda is the dimension of the null space of a. So null of null of a minus lambda i. You need to compute this. The algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue lambda of a is the number of times it appears as a root of the characteristic equation. So, for example, lambda minus 1 whole square is equal to 0. It is appearing twice, lambda is equal to 1. So, it is characteristic, the algebra multiplicity is 2. An eigenvalue lambda is a simple eigenvalue if its algebra multiplicity is 1. For example, you do have a characteristic equation lambda 1 minus 1 times of lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 4 is equal to 0. Let us say that. So, in this case, lambda is equal to 1, lambda minus 2 whole square is equal to 0. That means you do have lambda is equal to 1, 2, comma 2. So, in this case, lambda is equal to 1 is simple and lambda is equal to 2 is multiplicity of 2. And on the other hand, the geometric multiplicity lambda of is the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda. So, you do get a lambda that is lambda is equal to 1 is the simple eigenvalue and lambda is equal to 2 and lambda is equal to 2 appearing twice appearing twice so therefore the algebraic multiplicity algebraic multiplicity is becomes 2 in this case The geometric multiplicity of lambda is the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i. Suppose lambda is equal to 1, right, lambda is equal to 1. So what I do is I will compute a minus i and uh, null space of this uh, wherever it is mapped to the origin. That is what at actually the geometric multiplicity. So, the algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity. Algebraic multiplicity is simply depending on the, the eigenvalues, whether they are repeated eigenvalues, whether they are similar eigenvalues, that will decide the algebraic multiplicity. Whereas, the geometric multiplicity is 
the dimension of the null space of a minus lambda i. Yeah, look at this example. A is equal to 3 by 3 matrix. I mean, for the sake of simplicity, I took A by 3. B is also 3 by 3. So, what are the eigenvalues for the matrix A? So, the eigenvalues values of A that is determinant of 1 minus lambda 0, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda 0, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda is equal to 0. So, you do get lambda is equal to 1, 1, 1 eigenvalues. So, obviously, so the characteristic equation is lambda minus 1 whole power 3 is equal to 0. So, this is what is called the, the that is what is called the algebraic multiplicity. So, the algebraic multiplicity is 3. However, the geometric multiplicity of the matrix A is, however, the geometric multiplicity of the matrix A is 3 and that of matrix is B. Now, look at here the matrix B. So, similarly, since it is a, you see here, this is the main diagonal and this is upper diagonal. So, it becomes upper triangular matrix. Again, the eigenvalues are same. So, lambda minus 1 is equal to lambda minus 1 whole cube is equal to 0. So, for the matrices A and B, the algebraic multiplicity is same. That is 3. In the case of A, that is lambda minus 1 whole cube is equal to 0 and B lambda minus 1 whole cube is equal to 0. So, algebraic multiplicity of one of both the matrices is 3 either cases. However, the geometric multiplicity of one of matrix A right for the matrix A since it is a unit matrix so obviously the the geometric multiplicity of 1 is 3 and that of the matrix B is 1 because the there is a what you call the, this becomes upper triangular matrix and when you compute this but the compare it to A minus null space of A minus lambda I. So when you do the null space of A minus lambda I so lambda I is equal to 1 so the A minus lambda I so B minus lambda I that is B minus I. So, what is B minus I? That is 1 minus 1, 0, 1, 0, and it is 0, 1 minus 1, 0, and it is 1, 0, 0, 1 minus 1, 0. Right? So, what would happen to this? In this case, the determinant happens to be 0. Right? Determinant happens to be 0. So, in this case, the null space of this, this is, uh, so null space of this is, uh, happens to be, so this is a, <coughs> this diagonal, main diagonal is 0, so only you do have a this matrix where this is subdiagonal, only 1 is the, not 0 and rest everywhere is 0. So therefore, obviously, the geometric multiplicity of the matrix B, the, the geometric multiplicity of the matrix B is, turns out to be 1, whereas in this case it is 3, because if you do a minus lambda i, what would happen to this a minus lambda i? So, a minus lambda i, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, a minus lambda i. So, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, obviously, it will become 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, the null space of this matrix is null cell itself, therefore, the geometric multiplicity is 3. Whereas in this case it is not true, so therefore the the the, the geometric multiplicity of the matrix B is only one, as we see over here, right? Because so when you map this null space of this, so null space of a B minus B minus I, so that is zero, that is one zero 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 one zero zero zero. So this entry is zero, and this is actually the the this is my, I mean only one. I mean, uh, G, zero uh, the non-zero diagonal, so that is 1, it turns out to be geometric multiplicity, uh, ge geometric multiplicity is 1, whereas in this case it is 3. So, therefore, it is very clear from this example that the algebraic multiplicity turns out to be same for the both matrices, not necessarily that they will have the same geometric multiplicity, which we have seen over in this case, that is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, for this matrix A, the algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity both are 3, 
and uh, for this matrix that is the characteristic equation is lambda minus 1 whole cube is equal to 0 therefore the the algebra multiplicity is 3 and null space of a minus lambda i corresponding to the lambda is equal to 1 a minus lambda i is itself is 0 so therefore the algebraic the geometric multiplicity is also 3 whereas in this case the algebraic multiplicity is 3 as lambda minus 1 whole cube is equal to 0 but the null space of b minus i corresponding to 1 is not actually it is uh, you know the null space and it is actually the turns out to be 1 so therefore the geometric multiplicity turns out to be 1 for this second matrix b well by knowing the geometric multiplicity algebraic multiplicity we can draw many conclusions let us take this definition two matrix an eigen value is called a defective eigen value if its geometric multiplicity is less than its algebraic multiplicity right defective eigen value if its geometric multiplicity is less than the algebraic multiplicity so in fact the matrix b is a defective right because the geometric algebraic multiplicity is the algebraic multiplicity is 3 geometric multiplicity is 1 so its geometric multiplicity is less than algebraic multiplicity a matrix is called a defective matrix if it has a defective eigen value otherwise it is non defective right so by knowing this what we can make a conclusion is in the case of matrix a it's a non defective matrix because the algebraic multiplicity turns out to be 3 in the case of identity matrix order of order 3 and geometric multiplicity also turns out to be 3 so therefore it is non defective right whereas when you talk about matrix b it is a defective eigen, eigen value and it is a defective matrix because the algebraic multiplicity is 3 whereas geometric multiplicity is only 1 so therefore geometric multiplicity is less than the algebraic multiplicity therefore it is a defective matrix well what are the advantages of this uh, consequence of this a n by n matrix is diagonalable you can a make it diagonalizable if and only if it is a non defective matrix right so you can make a matrix a diagonalizable so once you make the diagonalizable then the matrix competition becomes easy and which will help us in order to find out the solution to the system of equations right so an n by n matrix is diagonalizable if and only if it is a non defective matrix for example in the previous case we have a non defective matrix 3 by 3 matrix because its algebraic multiplicity is 3 and geometric multiplicity is also 3 therefore it is a non defective matrix and hence it is always diagonalizable matrix whereas in the matrix b it is a defective matrix because the geometric multiplicity is 1 less than the algebraic multiplicity though therefore it is a non defective matrix it is a defective matrix so defective matrix is not actually diagonalizable so let us start with the proof suppose a is diagonaliz diagonalizable matrix so if a is a diagonalized matrix then there exists a matrix x such that x inverse ax is equal to d so a diagonal matrix is clearly non defective so therefore a diagonal matrix is clearly non defective thus d is non defective matrix and so is the matrix c so that means that means if you have a diagonal matrix there exists a matrix x not equal to 0 such that x inverse ax is equal to d a diagonal matrix so therefore a diagonal matrix is clearly a non defective matrix and it can be diagonalizable conversely suppose that a is non defective matrix so let's say that a is non defective matrix that means geometric 
multiplicity is less than all the geometric multiplicities as we spoke in the previous case geometric multiplicity is 1 and that of matrix is b that means geometric multiply is less than the algebraic multiplicity that means it is a defective matrix so suppose that a is non defective matrix that means geometric multiplicity is not less than algebraic multiplicity non defective it is a defective matrix since the geometric multiplicity of each eigenvalue is the same as its eigen algebraic multiplicity right so it is a non defective so it is a non defective means geometric multiplicity is each of the eigenvalues same as the algebraic multiplicity so the matrix a have n linear independent eigen vectors okay so, the, because the rank is considered to be same and it will have n linear independent eigenvectors and they should form actually a necessary condition for a basis. So, let x1, x2, xn, they are all non-zero matrices and they are all non-singular matrices, non-singular which would implies x inverse ax is equal to diagonal matrix called D. So, which is a diagonal matrix. So, therefore, the idea is if the matrix is defective matrix, then we will not be able to diagonalize and if the matrix A is non-defective, since the geometric multiplicity of each eigenvalue of algebraic multiplicity is same, then you will have a n linear independent vector, thereby you could able to get a matrix X not equal to 0 such that X inverse AX is equal to D. So, before going to that, let us have a remark over here. If x inverse ax is equal to d, that is diagonal of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda n, then x is the eigenvector of matrix A, right. If x inverse ax is equal to d, then x is the eigenvector of matrix A. It tells us that the matrix is always not diagonalizable. However, it is always possible to block diagonalize matrix A. So, that means, what it tells us is the matrix is always not diagonalizable, it cannot be diagonalizable. However, it is always possible to have a block diagonalized matrices. That means you can have a blocks that is a block and that is a block 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 that is a block. This is what is called block diagonal matrix. block diagonal matrix. So, it tells us that the matrix is always not diagonalizable. However, it is always possible to block diagonalizable matrix A. A block diagonal matrix A is written as, so I can write this matrix A as, I can write this matrix A as A is equal to diagonal of A1, A2, A3 like that A n. These are all different. This is one block, this is another block, third block, like that. These are all blocks. So, when you diagonalize this matrix A, then you do get what you call easy way of computation. So, a well known example of a block diagonal matrix is the Jordan canonical form. Right? So, therefore, ultimately, we landed up with what we call a Jordan canonical form. Jordan canonical form. So, that means you will have block, will have blocks, will have blocks, will have blocks. This is what is called block diagonal. Block diagonal matrix. So, essentially what it means is a well known example of this pattern is Jordan canonical form. Now, let us go ahead with the what actually this Jordan canonical form will help us. So, the, in the form of this theorem, Jordan canonical form, if A is a n by n matrix, so if the matrix A is n by n matrix, 
then there exists a non singular matrix x such that x inverse x is equal to diagonal of that is j1 j2 jn like this so each of j1 j2 each j1 j2 etc jk are jordan blocks which are actually jordan blocks so if a is a n by n matrix then there exists a non singular matrix x such that x inverse x is equal to diagonal of j1 j2 j3 jn where each of the j1 are the jordan blocks so that means we could able to find out block diagonals where the matrix competition becomes much easier look at very simple example the one which we spoke till now let us consider a matrix a look at here minus 1 0 1 minus 1 0 1 0 3 0 0 0 minus 1 this is a matrix a and matrix b you see minus 13 minus 8 minus 4 12 seven four twenty four sixteen seven and x one one two minus two minus one minus three one minus two zero so we have the system x inverse ax is equal to b so we could able to find out an x such that we could able to get the x inverse ax is equal to b so see this example we have a similar matrices of size 3 and there is a matrix a matrix b and x so we should able to get x inverse ax is equal to b right so the matrices a and b are a and b are similar matrices a and b are similar matrices well following this we will have a theorem that is what is called similarity is an eigen value relation similarity is an eigen value relation so what is the eigen value relation it is analogous to what you call equivalence E Q I V A L A N C A equivalence property, right? The matrix A is similar to A, that is what is called reflexivity V property, and the matrix A is similar to matrix B, then B is similar to A, so A is similar to B, and B is similar to A, so it is called symmetric property, and A is similar to B, B is similar to b is similar to c then a is similar to c right this is what is called trans two property so a is similar to b b is similar to this is c actually b is similar to c then a is actually similar to c this is what is called trans two property so similarity is an eigen value relation this is what is called eigen value relation or which we also call it as equivalence relation sometimes we call it as equivalence relation e q i v a l e n c e equivalence relation equivalence relation well further let's see this example we have a matrix a 1 1 0 and the matrix b 1 0 1 now what is the p a x and p b x so px is 1 minus 2x minus x square right that is 1 minus x times of 1 minus x 1 minus so that is 1 minus 2 lambda plus lambda square or lambda square or you can write it as the 1 minus lambda square so it is x minus 1 all square right so a and b have the same characteristic polynomial 
there exists a non singular matrix b x such that x inverse ax is happens to be b then b is equal to x inverse of bx x inverse of ax so then you can write it as x inverse of i to x order of 2 by 2 that is x inverse of i x that is i2 clearly a is not equal to i2 matrix that is i2 is 1 0 0 1 see the notion of matrices being similar is a lot like saying two matrices are row equivalent right what is the remark over here the notion of matrices being similar is a lot like saying two matrices are row equivalent matrices this is one of the very very important property which we could see now with this motivation what we could able to extract is an n by n matrix A is diagonalizable matrix. So, what is the greatness about the diagonalizable? If it is diagonalizable, we could able to make much simpler competition, thereby we could get the solutions. An n by n matrix, an n by n matrix A is diagonalizable if and only if the sum of the dimensions of the eigenspace is n. So, that means the eigenspace of sum of the eigenspace is n equivalently if and only if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors, then it becomes a basis. So, once it becomes a basis, it will have the rank. Right? So, not all matrices are diagonalizable. The matrices that are not diagonalizable are called defective matrices. As we see, not all actually the diagonalizable matrices. Right? So, defective matrices is nothing but the geometric multiplicity is less than the algebraic multiplicity right those are all defective matrices whereas the defect the the algebraic multiplicity is greater than the geometric multiplicity or equivalent those becomes actually the non defective matrices so if the matrices are non defective matrices we could able to diagonalize the matrices defective matrices and a non defective matrices very important it is something to do with the what we call the the geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity so, algebraic multiplicity is nothing but the power raised to the characteristic equation whereas geometry multiplicity is null space of a minus lambda i is equal to 0, right. So, in the example which we did it, we proved that the matrix A both geometry multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity both are equivalent to 3 and it becomes a non-defective matrices and since it is a non-defective matrices, it can be diagonalizable whereas other matrix B is the geometric multiplicity is 1 whereas algebraic multiplicity is 3 it is a it is a defective matrices and it is a since it is a defective matrices not this it is going to be a diagonalizable so therefore not diagonalizable are called defective matrices so this is a very very important concept in the case of diagonalizable now let us start with simple example the one which we spoke over here let us consider the matrix a 4 by 4 matrix 5 4 2 1 0 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 3 0 1 1 minus 1 2. So, the eigenvalues of A are all what are the eigenvalues of this matrix A? So, these are all 1 2 4 4 these are the eigenvalues. The dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue of 4 is 1 right eigenvalue of 4 is 1 not 2 not 2 ok the eigenspace is 1 because when you write it as a minus 4i, right, you should dimension of this null space, it turns out to be 1, not actually 2, because simply you are saying 2, because the diameter is repeated 4, no, it is not true, it is only 1, so a is not diagonalizable, so a is not diagonalizable, right, a is not diagonalizable, why it is not diagonalizable? Because here the geometric multiplicity, right? So lambda minus 4 whole square. So this is actually here the algebraic multiplicity is 2, whereas geometric multiplicity turns out to be only 1. So therefore, it is a defective matrix. So therefore, it is not diagonal. However, there is an inevitable matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to P. P inverse AP is equal to J, where J is equal to this Jordan form. So, this is the mind diagonal and this is the sub diagonal, this is the sub diagonal, these are all sub diagonal, Jordan form. So, this can be diagonalizable. So, however, to calculate the Jordan normal form of the given matrix A, 
what is the characteristic equation this is the characteristic equation so lambda minus 4 it is twice so therefore algebraic multiplicity is 2 and geometric multiplicity is 1 because lambda for corresponding to lambda is equal to 4 and if you write it a minus lambda i null space of this turns out to be 1 so therefore this is a defective matrix so the eigen space corresponding to the eigen value 1 can be found a x1 is equal to lambda 1 x which implies x1 turns out to be if you solve 1 1 0 0 transpose similarly for lambda is equal to 1 could compute the eigen value corresponding to eigen values so that is again you will have a x2 is equal to lambda x2 for lambda is equal to 2 Similarly, you have ax3 is equal to lambda x3 for lambda is equal to 4. So, one dimensional, although this is a double eigenvalue, look at over here x3. So, it is a one dimensional eigenvalue, although it is a double eigenvalue. Right? So, therefore, the beauty of this uh, Jordan canonical form is very well corrected with the systems which can be diagonalized, which cannot be diagonalized. By diagonalizing, we will have the we will come overcome the difficulties arising in solving the matrix equations. So the geometric multiplicity is the dimension of the given eigenvalue of each of the three eigenvalues is one. In this case, it is each of the eigenvalue is one. Therefore, the two eigenvalues are equivalent to four corresponding to a single Jordan block, and the Jordan block form of the matrix A is a direct sum. So therefore, I will write this J as J1 of 1 plus j1 of 2 plus j2 of 4. So, I will get what you call direct sum. I will call the direct sum. So, the conclusion is once you form into a Jordan canonical form, it can be diagonalized as we see because in this case it turns out to be the geometric multiplicity is the and the algebraic multiplicity so, when you compute it, geometric multiplicity is less than the, the, uh, the algebraic multiplicity. So, therefore, it could be diagonalizable. So, there are two Jordan chains, right? You can have a Jordan chains over here. Two have length 1, that is, which we call it as a V and which we call it as a W. Corresponding to the eigenvalue, that is, lambda is equal to 1 okay and lambda is equal to 2. So, there is a one chain of length 2 corresponding to the eigenvalue 4. To find this claim, we calculate what you call kernel. Kernel of a minus 4i whole square. So, this is how you do get rank and nullity, right. So, by using this computation, so we could able to get the matrix in this fashion, span of this matrix. Well, pick a vector in the above span that is not in the kernel of a minus lambda i. Right? For example, if you take this y is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1, a minus 4i is equal to x and a minus 4i of x is equal to 0. So, yx is a chain of length of 2 corresponding to the eigenvalue 4. Right? So, the transition of matrix P such that P inverse a p is equal to j. That means P inverse a p is equal to j is formed by putting these vectors. So, you do get V, W, X, Y, you do get the matrix. So, once you do this matrix, then P in or P is equal to J, that is what is called Jordan canonical form. So, therefore, what is the conclusion you can draw from this Jordan canonical form is, once the matrix is not able to diagonalize well, you try to see the invert of this and make the Jordans, Jordan blocks and see that what would happen to each Jordan block in order to make the conclusion. So, with this I do stop over here and I am sure that uh, uh, I mean uh, today we will be able to learn how do you diagonalize the matrices, what are the complications if you diagonalize, what are the difficulties, how do you overcome and uh, by using what you call the Jordan canonical forms. So, thank you very much for uh, patiently hearing my lecture and thank you very much.